was asked to come here and, and present to you uh, what it took to to make a Olympic champion, to win gold at the Olympics, and um, and I'll take you through the journey of what it did take. It's not a it's not an easy road. A lot of you just see the end product. You see uh, the Olympic Games on TV, and you go, "Wow, I wish I could be like those guys and do what they do." But it's uh, behind the scenes that all uh, that really counts, and uh, that's the hard part of the whole journey. Uh, there's just a little bit of a a background of, of myself. My main highlight there is obviously to have been at four Olympic Games. I've been to Sydney 2000, <coughs> Athens 2004, Beijing 2008, and, and now London 2012. As you can see there, um, I've had some medals along the way and coached uh, even some princesses, Princess Charlene of Monaco. Uh, so my new advert uh, at my swimming club is from Olympic gold medals to princesses. So. You know, it helps quite a bit. But obviously the most recent and uh, the most rewarding was uh, 2012 London with Chad. Uh, and what made it so special was obviously beating Michael Phelps, uh, a legend uh, in the world of sport, the most uh, decorated uh, athlete of all time, and uh, obviously Chad's hero. So uh, it was kind of special to, to kind of uh, plan the whole... Uh, so to speak, the feet of Michael Phelps. Uh, and I'll take you through that and, and tell you just how we did it. Not everything though, just a few things. <laughs> uh, with the South African team, uh, we planned, you know, to go to these Olympic Games and win some medals. And when you're dealing with uh, Sascock, your Olympic movement, and uh, they want to know what the expectations are, will we feature, will we do well, how many medals will you bring. You always need, you, you know, you got to, in this game, you've got to become a little bit of a politician because you don't want to overextend yourself and then they, you don't get the results and they come back to you and they say, oh, but you promised us 20 medals or whatever. So rather always underplay it. And the one guy that I did underplay, and, and I don't even know whether he knows to this day, was Chad. You know, when they're always asking me about medals, I said to him, we'd win two medals. I said we'd win a medal with Cameron van der Berg. Cameron was obviously a seasoned campaigner. He'd been to the Olympics before, and um, he was ranked number one in the world. He had broken the world record, and he was world champion. So obviously he was an obvious choice for a medal. So it wasn't too much pressure. Pressure on Cameron, but the bigger picture, everyone was expecting the medal from Cameron. The other medal we were, we were backing on was the, medley, uh, the 4x1 free relay medal. Uh, and Chad was just on the side, but quietly, my confidence was Chad was going to beat Michael Phelps. And, um, you know, when I say there, uh, we did it uh, quietly like that with the, with the Sascock uh, body, obviously we had to have a buy-in from our own federation, SA Swimming, because obviously we need to travel the world, get out there, race, and, and plan this well in advance. And uh, that's how long it took. Uh, not just the last 24 months, but that is when I really believed that we had a, a real chance of beating Michael Phelps. Uh, for Michael Phelps and his coach, Bob Bowman, I don't think they knew who Chad Ditlow was uh, 24 months before the Olympic Games. And we were off in uh, Singapore at the World Youth, at the Youth Olympics. And, you know, w once I saw what Chad could do at the Youth Olympics, we went to Youth Olympics and, and he brought home five medals and uh, one of them gold. But the secret there was that we didn't rest Chad or we didn't taper him, we didn't shave him. And, and for those of you who don't understand the terms that I'm using, tapering means that we fully rested going into a competition and shaving, yes, we, we shaved. <laughs> <the whole night. laughs> Front, back, everywhere shaved. Under the arms, everywhere shaved. Sorry, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's, that's the reality of, of, of the game we're in. It's milliseconds and uh, everything that can help, we take advantage of it. So uh, two years before in 2010, we went to Singapore for the Youth Olympics. And as I said, we didn't, I didn't rest him. He was, he was a young boy there. He was about to break onto the international scene and start swimming senior times. And, uh, and he did really great uh, at that level without resting and without shaving. Two, uh, not even two months, about four weeks later, the real big competition for us Although it may sound crazy that I didn't, 
plan the Youth Olympics as the major competition for that year. The big competition for me and for Chad was the Commonwealth Games, which was in Delhi. And that's where I, 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 I figured Chad could really break onto the scene and, and become a major threat to, to world competition. So that's the reason why I didn't shave him in, in, in Singapore and, and, and rest him. I rested him for, for uh, Delhi, and that's where he won the two gold medals and, and started to show the world that uh, he could step up and uh, be up with the best in the world. That, that process of, of planning and that those, those last two years, well, it was about 18 months, really, that we were on the road and traveling and, and getting out there and, and doing our thing. But the, mo the most important thing in, in my program is, and, and I believe strongly in this, is if, if you, whatever you put into your program, that's what you're going to get out. You know, uh, you, uh, and I'm sure it's the same for any of you here in the business world and in your branding and all that, what you guys are all talking about. If, if you don't put in the, in the, the hard stuff, you're not going to get anything out of it. And, and that's just the way I coach, and, and that's the way I coach Chad and my whole team. So basically what I'm, what I'm referring to there is uh, Chad, Chad will get up in a, in a morning session and he can swim very close to his best times when he's shaved, when he's rested, all that kind of stuff. That's why he could still win those medals at the Youth Olympics and, and I knew bigger things would come when I, when I rest him. The team support. Going into this whole project, it's, it's, it's not just one... It's not just the fact of myself as a coach or, or, or Chad as the swimmer. It's a whole, it's a whole uh, team project there, you know. And um, yes, I've got the polit politicians there and the administrators and all that. And in this game, you have to realize that it's all joined together. When you get to the big level of, of Olympic Games, it all plays a part. I mean, everyone wants a piece of Chad. When he was getting ready, I still remember when he was getting ready to race the, the main event against Michael Phelps. We had people on the pool deck that I've never seen in my life. We've never seen them in the, in the 12 years we've been together. All of a sudden, they're our best mates coming to ask us, how are we going to do? I mean, these are people in our own company, you know. So that's the excitement that goes on about it, and, and you, have to, you have to deal with all that. So when I say they're the team support, you know, uh, it's, a whole, it's a whole package. And, and how I like to do it is uh, there's Chad and myself in the middle, Obviously, he's doing all the work. I'm pulling all the strings of what's going on around. And, and what I did was I surrounded myself and, and Chad with the best support team that we could have. Obviously, we need Chad's family on board, my family on board. Uh, we need the federations. We need our, our, our uh, physios on board, our doctors on board. We, it's, it's a big uh, team effort. It's not just one individual. Obviously, I like to think of myself as the CEO. I'm calling all the shots and, and putting everything in place. And he's doing all the work and everyone around us is supporting. But it can't be done without all the support. It, it, it's, it's impossible. I, I, don't, I, don't th I think if you had to speak to any top international sports person, uh, it definitely can't be uh, done without the support of, of, of your team members with you. What we did was, what, what what my plan was, and, and, and this is how I like to do it, I like to know our opposition, who we're racing, and that. And, and Chad made that quite clear, that he wants to beat Michael Phelps. You know, um, for, for, for years he was telling me, uh, I still remember when he was a young boy, it was about 2008, I'm giving you age away, but 2008, 2009, he went on his first World Cup trip to uh, to Berlin. And I wasn't on the trip, and, he, and I remember getting a text from him saying, I'm racing Michael Phelps, and he's in the lane next to me. You know, it was quite a big thing for him. Michael Phelps had just won uh, the, the seven gold, uh, the eight gold medals in Beijing, and uh, he was the, the big uh, guru of, of world sports. So, you know, it was quite a big thing for a 16-year-old uh, boy to be racing in the lane next to him. So um, what I tried to do was I tried to get out there the last 18 months, predict who our opposition would be in, in this race, obviously Michael being the main opposition, and, and get out there and race as many times as we could against all these guys. We have a series of the World Cup, the Mar Nostrum and everything, and uh, we would travel the world, and it and, and sounds all nice, but uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's very hard. It's taxing on both of us, and our family is away from home. Before the Olympic Games, we were away from home for three months, so it's, it's quite taxing on us. But, um, you know, to get to know your opposition, I think that helped. I think that really helped Chad when he had to come up uh, on the big day and race Michael Phelps and the others that we had already raced. I mean, I'll talk you through how the actual race uh, preparation goes, and you'll see what I'm talking about: getting to know your opposition and why it makes things a lot easier and, and more calming effect uh, going into the event. 
But uh, as I say, you know, to learn the opposition, you learn their race tactics. You you learn. Uh, I, I I kind of <laughs> to to explain it to you. It's kind of you know I will sit there at galas and and some people may look at me and say what what is this guy looking at? You know when a Michael Phelps walks past or. Uh, uh, Masuda walks past. These are the opposition guys that I'm talking about. And I'll stare at them and I'll watch their body language and that. I like to read the body language and uh, see whether they're fatigued, whether they're fresh still and things like that. And you pick that up. You pick up the little habits along the way. Maybe just like a poker player, he rubs his ear or he scratches his nose. He gives away that he's got a good hand or a bad hand. But um, And that's the kind of things I like to look out for. And uh, once again, it's about racing the opposition and learning where they're going to be good and where they're not. Uh, instilling the confidence um, through the race times and 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 continuous performance uh, in competition. As I said, we went overseas, we raced the World Cups and that. But the most important part of our whole preparation uh, before London was we went to Europe for those three months I spoke to you about. And the whole plan was that we would race a time of 155. For those of you who don't know, that's pretty much on Chad's best time. But while we had raced the 155 throughout the, the, the months we were there, we were still in heavy training. And to give you an idea of his heavy training, uh, when it's really heavy, <laughs> it's 16 to 18 kilometers a day. Uh, when it's in that racing competition time, it's about 10 kilometers a day. So he's still training 10 kilometers a, a day while he's still racing at that speed. And if we could do that and still beat the opposition, I knew that uh, we'd have a very good chance to beat Michael Phelps. And um, and and to change the race tactics a few times and 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 try different things and and prepare differently for different races and 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 do that. So you're playing with things all the time and seeing what works best and 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 getting ready for the major competition. So it's a big prep. It's not just a, a one-off where we got lucky on the day and, and 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 we beat Michael Phelps the way we beat Michael Phelps. The way we beat Michael Phelps was all planned, and I'll take you through that um, uh, when I go on. Creating the self-belief, obviously he, he had this determination, Chad, to, to beat Michael Phelps. And uh, he had this burning hunger, the desire was there. There was no way that he didn't believe that he could beat Michael Phelps. And I kept instilling that in him with the way I trained him, the things we did, certain sets we did that, um, when I talk about sets, meaning the programs that we did. Uh, so I'd instill the confidence and the belief in him that he can do it. Because I mean, you must know, uh, if you had to ask Chad, anything about Michael Phelps, the way he swims and that he knows everything. It's probably better that Michael knows it. And um, and that's a good thing, knowing your opposition and, and, and working on, on the weak spot. And creating the belief, I designed the program around that so that we would, we would have that belief that we could beat Michael Phelps because we were never going to uh, attack Michael Phelps and try to lead the race or anything like that. We were going to swim. Uh, behind Michael Phelps. You all did see the race, I'm, I'm presuming. You all did watch the race uh, where Chad came from behind to beat Michael Phelps. And um, the, 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 whole idea of <laughs> the whole idea of coming from behind to beat Michael Phelps was that we knew Michael, it, we watched over the years, Michael was very good on the last turn of the underwaters when he goes under the water. And uh, we knew that no one in the world would ever match Michael going underwater. So we worked on that. We, we trained for that. And our whole plan was to swim off the shoulder of Michael into the last turn, come up with Michael on the last turn. And what we picked up with video analysis and the sports scientists working with us and everything is that Michael couldn't accelerate on the last 50. He would just keep a constant speed, whereas Chad has tremendous acceleration in his stroke. So we knew that if we could be within range off the last turn, where Michael destroys the whole field, we knew we could swim over the top of, of, of Michael and beat him at the end. I just didn't expect it to be that close. It was, <laughs> it was fingernails. But in all honesty, the, the belief um, and the passion and everything and the, and the hard work and everything that went into it, that is the reason why you see the, the, the picture that you see on the screen behind me there. Um, you know, it, he's the, the emotions. I think I think when they stand up there, I've never stood on the the podium and won a gold medal or anything. But I think what's going through his mind there is, is what what everything that's gone into the sacrifice for the families himself, everything around us that we've done. 
So it's that emotional, you know, just that relief of, of emotion at the end there. So I think that's what, you, what you're seeing on the screen there, that, that um, passion there coming out. And uh, to be honest with you, there's no better feeling than doing something like that. Uh, even as a coach, standing there in the stands, yeah, you know, to do, to do something like that, to beat the world, the way we had planned it, you know, uh, to perfection. The, the race, maybe for the first time in the 12 years I've coached Chad, <laughs> he listened to everything to the T, you know. And we swam hundreds of races, and that one was the perfect race. And, and it proved to be the perfect race because he won the gold medal with it. And, um, you know, uh, I'll just I'll tell you a few moments of, of, of what we experienced right before the race. Right before the race, Chad came to me, he said, uh, I'm not too nervous because now he had already swum some races before and he was really nervous on the first day. We swam a race on the first day, he finished fifth. Not too bad at the Olympic Games to finish fifth, but um, we were a little bit disappointed. We thought we could win a, a medal in that event. And, uh, but I could see he was really nervous before that race. Before the Turner Butterfly, there was no nerves, zero. It, it was actually, even for myself, there were no nerves. We were, we were quite calm. Uh, I still remember uh, Chad and I scalping home to my wife and my kids and we were chatting to them and uh, they were saying, but aren't you racing in a couple of hours? We said, yeah, we've got time, we'll go down to the pool just now. So we were really relaxed. And then before the race, he, he came to me and said, now you have to go into the call rooms you know, your final core room, they give you your lanes and you go through the second one and then out onto the onto the pool deck. And uh, I remember him saying to me, well, are there any uh, last words of advice, anything? I just said to him, you know, you want to beat Michael Phelps? This is your last chance because he's giving up after this. This is his last <laughs> Olympic Games. You've got your last chance to beat him. If you want to beat him, go beat him. And that was it. And... Um, as we all know, the, the rest is, is history. And um, I'd just like to share uh, something uh, with you, something special. Um, it was a little bit of destiny here too. Uh, you know, this, this was meant to be. It wasn't about what well it was. It was about a lot of hard work and planning. But something there was, was on our side and it was, it was destiny. It was meant to happen. And uh, I'll just tell you a few events that took place that, uh, that you, can, you can work out for yourselves. In, in 2010, we went to the World Short Course in Dubai. And on the first day, Chad swam the same, well, swam a 400 medley, and he finished fifth. Three days later, he swam a 200 butterfly in lane five with the world record holder in lane six. And he won the gold medal by 0.05. This is short course, okay? We go to the Olympic Games on day one. Chad swims the 400 medley finishes fifth. Three days later, he swims in lane five. The world record holder Michael Phelps is in lane six, and he wins by 0.05. So something, <laughs> something was really on our side there, but it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of planning, a lot of dedication, and, uh, and teamwork that goes into it. And I think that's the message I'd like to put out there. Uh, you know, a lot of sacrifice, a lot of teamwork, and, and planning. If you plan it correctly, and you've got the goods to work with, anything can happen.